the sky, everyone. Welcome to Sunday. Last week I shared with you the secret to sadhana being observance of your ego. Not just the thoughts or the emotions or the actions, but the ego behind it. That consciousness of self. Now, ego can be held in, in tamas, which is ignorance, like a bull in a china shop. Ego can be full of rajas, action, activity. And when driven by tamas, it's even worse. If you are tamasic and you just sit still, that's fine. But if you are tamasic and you are driven, by the selfish ego, the ignorant ego, well, you create a lot of misery and the karma that goes with it, the consequences of your actions. Or the ego can be held in sattva, that's what we prayed for, for goodness. But sometimes the ego can be overbearing. It can be too much of sattva. The way it begins to feel superior, self-righteous, we call it. How do we protect the ego from all of this? <laughs> Quite a journey, wouldn't you say? How do you protect the ego from all of this? You know, there, there comes a moment in spirituality, on the spiritual journey, where you're not sure about where the ego is. Am I tamasic? Am I rajasic? Am I sattvic? Am I too self-righteous? How do you escape that? Where there is doubt and indecision and guilt and fear, you're not sure where the ego is placed. But you can feel a sense of power to act. But does this secret lie? It lies in making the connection with the divine. What do you think the word yoga means? Connecting. Connecting. Your evolving ego, connecting with the divine. What happens when the evolving ego connects with the divine? The seeking ego, the sincere ego, connects with the divine. Freedom, joy, security, positivity, and fearlessness. In God, we feel secure, we feel fearless. But in God, So the ego needs to make that connection. That was my life story. I felt so disconnected, totally disconnected and miserable with that. In my earlier life, in my early life, I wasn't even aware that I was disconnected. But suddenly, at 20, I began to feel a very strong disconnection. I know it was karmic timing, astrology informed me as such. But I felt this profound disconnection that I never even felt before. That began my search. How can I make this connection? How, I can, how can I find God? How can I have a relationship with God? That was really the most depressing situation where I felt disconnected. I felt godless. I felt unworthy. I felt impure. The magic happened. The switch happened. The light turned on in the ashram of my guru, Baba Nichananda. As suddenly as depression came in me, so too, suddenly, 
it disappeared. The light was turned on. In that guru space. My heart opened up. For the first time in my life, I didn't feel loveless. A big knot in the heart opened up, never to close back. It wasn't open fully, but fully enough for me to feel gratitude and feel happy. When I left it in there, do you know? that I took a little bag on my back and I never looked back to say goodbye. I was so miserable, so disconnected. I was heartless. I never looked back at my family. I just said, I'm going, and I, and I left. But in India, when that heart opened up, I went to the city, and my first postcard was sent to Trinidad. I'm happy. I found what I was looking for. I have no fixed address, but I'll write you when I can. I felt happy. The connection. The connection. But what was beautiful, of course, I didn't understand anything about this, this energy. So I was confused in the beginning. But a book saved me, Devatma Shakti. It explained about this awakened Kundalini. I didn't go to India to get involved in Kundalini. But when I saw it in the book, Signs of Awakened Kundalini, I saw what was happening. And then I realized that I was in a path. <laughs> Siddha Yoga, Maha Yoga. But what opened up there just grew. It grew with my sadhana. It grew with my chanting. I love to chant. I love mantras. It grew with the chanting. It grew with my activity. Cleaning toilets in the garden. Carrying the cow poop. The cow droppings. Working with compost. Staying in the safety and security of the ashram environment. This energy grew within me, grew within me to the extent that I felt that my voice was mine. I felt that the divine was singing in and through me. The divine was walking in and through me. Can you imagine what happens when you feel a connection with the divine? And you no longer feel that insecurity of your own ego. That's the best thing that could ever happen to me. That was the magical moment of my life. When I remember it, oh my God. From darkness to light. My life really began then. Truly began. And I, was, I became very disciplined. The master wasn't there, physically, but I felt his energy in the space. I felt the incredible energy of Baba Muktananda and Baba Nichananda, Baba Nichananda more so. After about a month and a half or so in the ashram, I felt that maybe I could look through in there if such a natural like this exists and I, I may find one with a master in it. So I traveled through in there. But this ashram influenced me that I, everywhere I go, I would feel the same power that I felt with me. So it went with me. And whenever I go to any holy place, I'd feel as though I'm sitting back in the ashram in Ganeshpuri. So the ashram went with me. 
And when I went to the holy places, I felt just as I felt in Ganeshpuri. So I came back to Ganeshpuri. And I, I spent extra time there until I felt, you know what? I think I can go back to Trinidad. <laughs> but spirituality isn't in India, eh? Spirituality is in our heart. And I can carry the ashram with me to Trinidad. That's how I felt. I felt liberated. I felt free. And I came back to Trinidad. And I took up back my humanitarian job of teaching. And teaching was different. When I stood in front of the classroom, oh God, it was no longer I who was speaking. It was the divine in and through me. I had the greatest time with these children. Teaching was no longer a job. It was a joy. The connection. Sadhana was total joy. Chanting was total joy. Doing seva was total joy. I changed the whole landscape around the home. It had to be like the ashram. It had to be like the ashram. I sat with a discipline every day. I, I came with my Guru Gita book and I'm chanting. I'm not asking anyone. But one by one my siblings came. And my mother, of course, was always, always there with me. And the whole place changed. Everybody loved it. Everybody honored what I was doing. And that's how it began. It started with me. It started with the home. It started with my job in the community. And then two years later, I was invited to India. And that's why I did the training. So the connection, the connection is the important. And I thought I had to live in an ashram. I thought that my life was so full of spirituality. In fact, at one point, I, I tried living in an ashram. I didn't want to lead any ashram. Thank God, one of the swamis from India came. And I was very happy to hand over all that I was doing. And I tried to live in an ashram a little bit, but it didn't work. I, I began to feel the pangs for mastering the world. I felt such freedom. I felt I could take this into the world. And that's what I did. You know my life story? Mastering the inside, mastering the outside. But the connection is what made living in the world so, so powerful. Even in the midst of a high-paced industry, industrial atmosphere, I could feel the divine inside of me. It was no longer I. It was a divine and I. So that connection is very vital, and I pray and wish that that God connection will stay with you in every moment, not two minutes, every moment. That you can go to bed with it. You can wake up with it. You can live in that awareness. Don't stop till that happens. If it can happen to me, it can happen to you and to everyone. That's why I do this work. I could have been in secular life. But at 39, I thought, enough of industry, enough of union, enough of exploitation of people. Non-profit, work for humanity, be a blessing. And that's what I did since 39 to this day. Feeling that security of the divine behind my every action. And you see how I pray. I center myself in the divine as I begin this day. 
in that center of infinite peace, infinite love, infinite goodness, infinite vitality, infinite wisdom. That's how I feel. That's how I live. I stay centered there, that my every thought in this day, my every word, my every action be full of light, sattva, goodness, not self-righteousness, and be a blessing to the world. And to avoid any self-righteousness, but I don't have to avoid it. I don't need to. I pray. I don't need to pray anymore because I'm doing it continuously. I pray to stay alive to divide the will. I do what I do because I am aligned to divide will. May it be so for all of you. So that's my Sunday morning message to you. Stay connected. Let yoga happen. Stay connected. In fact, as we seek the divine, the divine is also seeking to express in and through us. So it's not a one-way street. There's a saying, as you walk towards God, God runs towards you. Or God helps those who help themselves. The God is seeking to manifest in and through you. Open the doorway. Uncover. Let go. Detach. And the divine will manifest in and through you. That's when the magic happens. May the magic happen to you. Have a blessed day, everyone. Namaskar.